Uh, great. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Jim. I'm actually trying to share my screen here, and it is telling me host disabled participant screen sharing. You might have to make me Yeah, a I just gave you. I think, I think you now have it. Multiple participants can share. So I think you should be good. Awesome. Thanks. Yep. Um, so, yeah. So thanks, Jim. I really like, uh, and thanks everybody for coming. I really like the way, um, I really like the way that Jim kind of framed um, these issues that we're talking about today around business sustainability. Um, he talked about, you know, the the carrot and the and the stick approaches, right? Um, and so we have we have there are different opportunities for businesses to work on their environmental footprints and sustainability. Um, those that we associate with a, a carrot, right, would be those that are voluntary opportunities for businesses and, um, you know, uh, different resources that are available to help. Um, and then, you know, sometimes, as in the case of the reusable foodware ordinance that's um, that's becoming enforceable soon, um, it's more of a, you know, it's it's a compliance issue, right? Where um, food service businesses in um, in the county and in most of the county of Marin are going to be um, required to use uh, to follow the ordinance. So, um, I uh, coordinate the county's green business program, which is a voluntary program that helps businesses work on their um, reducing their environmental footprints. And some of you here uh, are participants in that program, so it's, that's great. Um, and then Danielle is going to join us a little bit later to talk about some specifics around the reusable foodware ordinance. Um, but I'll, I'll share some resources about that as well. Uh, so the Green Business Program, um, for those of you who don't know, is a it's a free countywide program that um, provides guidance for um, you know for busy, small, and medium sized businesses, um, really based on the assumption and, and based on our knowledge that businesses want to do the right thing about sustainability. Um, they want to shrink their environmental footprints. They want to let the community know that they care about the environment as much as as much as their customers do. Um, and, and we also recognize that that small and medium sized businesses are also very, very busy doing doing whatever it is they do, you know, selling pies or, you know, whatever. Um, and they may not have the bandwidth to really research like the best and most sustainable options around their business practices. So um, we provide some guidance for businesses around best environmental best practices um, and then recognize and promote um, the certified businesses that go through our program as, um, as champions in the community. Um, so just a little bit of a background about the program is that it, uh, you know, it's a, it's a Bay Area born um, effort and uh, the first green business program started back in 1996 in Alameda County. It was focused on uh, the auto repair industry and was um, initially started as a way to recognize businesses who were actually in compliance with local regulations around what they were supposed to do with um, auto fluids, right? There was a, a lot of issues around them not being disposed of correctly. So they wanted to give a little bit of a gold star to those who were um, following the rules, right? So that customers could identify those businesses and, um, and, and use them, you know, because they would know that their used oil is going to the right place and that kind of thing. Um, things sort of, you know, the program kind of spread to other Bay Area counties and evolved to go beyond a compliance, a beyond compliance model. So um, instead of just giving businesses a gold star for complying with um, with local regulations, um, standards were set for them to follow around stuff like recycling, waste management, um, energy efficiency, water conservation, that kind of stuff. And so uh, the Marin program first launched in 2002. Um, many, many, many other programs were formed in other counties in California as well. Um, and standards for the program have always become, have, have become much more robust. Like Back in 2002, if you were recycling at your business, you were you were doing a great job, right? And you deserved recognition for that. And now we're assuming, right, that every business is doing recycling. Um, and we want to make sure that they're actually, you know, composting and reducing their use of single use materials in any way they can, taking other measures to uh, get keep stuff out of landfill. 
Um, so in 2016, the California Green Business Network was formed as a central organization um, for all of these different programs around the state of California to, um, to develop uniform standards and kind of share their resources and knowledge with, you, with each other. And now in 2023, there are over 40 um, local programs across the state. Most of them are um, run by city or county governments, but some of them are run by nonprofits. Um, so this slide shows uh, a coverage map of um, green business programs in the state of California. And what excites me when I look at this map is that, you know, these programs all started like in very coastal progressive um, parts of the state. And looking at this map, you can see that there are programs now in like Inyo County and Fresno County and Kern County and, and some of the places where um, you know, getting resources and support around sustainability issues has been more of a challenge than it has in places like Marin County. Um, so, you know, it's really it, it's really a statewide um, uh, journey at this point and um, really awesome to see spreading to all these other locations. Um, so just to talk a little more about the program itself. So, you know, really the primary benefit of the program is that it provides a sustainability framework for your business. As I mentioned before, you know, your your business has has expertise in, in whatever service it is that your business is providing. And uh, you probably, as a smaller, medium-sized business in Marin County, don't have dedicated sustainability staff, right, to figure out, um, you know, uh, strategies for reducing your paper use or, or, you know, the best ways to kind of like optimize your waste management system, um, that kind of stuff. So um, when a business enrolls in the program, we ask a lot of questions based on, you know, uh, questions about the business sector and what the operations are like and, and what the building is like and the amount of landscaping and um, whether the um, building is owned or leased and um, generate a checklist of, of environmental best practices based on that. And then our program staff provides technical assistance um, for the business to figure out the best ways to meet those requirements. Um, really the, you know, what sets green California green business certification apart from some other um, green certifications is that there's a third party that's coming to your business and verifying that, um, that the environmental best practices are being met. That's not the case. There are some other programs out there where you you pay some money and you know sign a pledge or something like that, and there's no there's no actual verification. Um, so uh, you know it's nationally recognized. Businesses get um, a directory listing that uh, in a statewide California Green Business Directory that's uh, utilized pretty well and pretty fun to look at. Um, you know if you were wanting to make sure that you were prioritizing uh, being a customer of, of um, sustainable business, you could use that to shop for all kinds of uh, vendors and services. Uh, and then where possible, we're able to um, connect businesses with whatever incentives and rebates might be available um, to help green their business. Uh, so just want to highlight and sort of celebrate some of our awesome uh, Mill Valley certified green businesses here on this slide. So, you know, it's a, this is just a, it's just a sample, just kind of a smattering of different businesses. And, but you can really get a sense from looking at this, that, um, that we work with a lot of different kinds of businesses, right? So um, the Outdoor Art Club downtown is a, you know, uh, uh, event venue um, that's been with the program for a very long time. Of course, the Mill Valley Chamber of Commerce, um, the Mill Valley Inn, and also their um, sister property, the Aqua Hotel, um, are certified with our program, as uh, as is Good Earth. And um, Ambitalia, who's represented here uh, by Molly, um, Alpha Dog, which is a dog uh boarding and grooming place in Tam Valley, uh, WIGT Printing, the Redwoods, the, the senior community, and um, Goodman Building Supply. So uh, really gives you a sense of the range of, you know, we work with a lot of different kinds of businesses and the program is a good fit for um, for a lot, of, a lot of different businesses of different sizes uh, and different business sectors. So pretty cool. 
Um, so the way the certification process works is that we begin usually with a phone consult where we learn more about the business and what your operations look like. Um, and then, you know, the business would register in our online system and, and fill out, you know, fill out some information that would, um, that would help to generate a, a you know, a, an industry specific checklist for, um, for that yeah. business. Um, yeah the business would start to get to work on that checklist. And I'll show you some snapshots of what that checklist looks like in just a second. Um, but then we would do a site visit. Um, at that site visit, you know, we're really verifying that the business is, you know, does have those practices in place that they've that they've committed to doing. Um, we then usually do a follow-up report that says like, okay, you just have these like one or two more things that you need to do in, in, in order to complete your certification. And then once a business completes their final action items, um, their certification is complete, they get a program certificate, they get use of the, um, of the little logo that you see in the corner and like some window clings that they can slap up in their window. Um, if they like and use that seal on their website and and you know we encourage businesses to really share with their networks that they have um, taken the step to to uh, operate more sustainably. Um, so this is just a little snapshot of what that checklist that the business is working through looks like and and the subject matter of this particular snapshot is about um, solid waste but but we have um, we have program requirements that pertain to energy conservation and energy efficiency um, pollution prevention solid waste transportation wastewater water conservation and then like community and employee education um, so the questions on this on this snapshot just happen to be um, around purchasing office and copy paper that's um, recycled or FSC certified, um, as well as bathroom and kitchen papers with a minimum of 30% post-consumer recycled content. So those are, you know, examples. So business just works through this checklist, checks yes or no, or are not applicable. Um, and there are about 50 measures, uh, more or less, on the, on the average checklist. Um, and so this is kind of a this is kind of a broader list of some of the core um, program requirements, and um, you know they cover sort of all of those subject areas. Businesses are required to recycle and compost all the materials that are accepted in their area. Um, so you probably, as a part of your certification process, are going to want to connect with. Uh, Mill Valley Refuse, if that's your waste hauler, to make sure that you are fully taking advantage of the services that they provide, that your business is compliant with all um, state laws around um, business recycling, um, and that you have good, you know, labeled recycling and compost bins in your business that are are located in places, you know, in the logical places, right, where people are really going to use them and use them correctly. Um, use uh, printer copier paper and kitchen bath papers with, uh, with post-consumer recycled content. Um, reduce paper use by, you know, various means, kind of depending on the on the size, on, on the type of your business, but, you know, offering electronic receipts, keeping digital records, using electronic contracts, stuff like that. Um, energy efficiency is a big one too. And, and we require that um, businesses use energy efficiency lighting, such as LED, um, uh, water efficient toilets and um, aerators in kitchen and bathroom sinks to conserve water. Um, you know, this is a big issue lately, but uh, replacing disposable kitchen items with reusables, um, sort of, you know, there's some there's some flexibility here. It depends on the type of business. It depends if they actually have a kitchen. Um, it depends if, you know, in some cases, if they have uh, the ability to really do dishes or a dishwasher in that kitchen. But certainly any um, disposable food service items that a, that a business was providing, just even for on-site use, would need to be fiber-based compostable. So that's like, you know, bamboo or birch um, ware and uncoated fiber-based plates and stuff. Um, 
cleaning products is another area where a lot of businesses need to make some adjustments in, in order to become compliant. Um, there are exceptions, especially with food service businesses, because there are certain products that you are required by environmental health and safety to use. But, but aside from those, um, it's really, you know, uh, third party certified non toxic products that you should be using and our program staff can help you, um, you know, find non toxic alternatives to whatever products you are using. Um, saving energy with a programmable thermostat is another it's another good one that can save a lot more energy I think than than people realize um, so I just wanted to share um this this little success story from a, a San Rafael business called Mother Nature's Cleaning um, who gave some good testimonial about about you know how uh, how great of a fit the program was for them um, that they had you know Mother Nature's cleaning their uh, um, they specialize right in in non toxic um, furniture and rug cleaning um, and they're a really great business and and you know sustainability really is core to their you know to their business model right they're trying to provide a non toxic um, cleaning alternative for these kinds of things but. But our program and, and and our program recognizes and gives credit for that for sure. But but they also you know because our our certification is primary primarily operationally focused. They also need to be doing that you know operating that green business in a green space. Um, so they had very outdated and inefficient um, uh, fluorescent lighting, and were leasing their space. So they were very reluctant to. Um, to really pay for making upgrades to that space because they weren't sure how long they were going to stay. Um, we were able to connect them with rebates through uh, a energy efficiency outfit called TEAA that it really brought down the cost of their lighting upgrade to like the net project cost after rebates and stuff was like $41, right? So um, that project kind of paid for him paid for itself through energy savings on their bill, like in a month and a half or something like that. So um, just a great example of how, you know, doing the right thing in terms of sustainability can oftentimes save money and save in some cases a lot of money over time. Um, yeah, so um, I'm very happy to take questions and sort of discuss and, um, you know, even discuss people's individual situations if uh, if they're interested. I, I put up a link here for um, folks who are interested in food service businesses who are looking for assistance around the reusable foodware ordinance. Um, you can reach out to foodware at marincounty.org. There is a team of, um, uh, there's a team uh, working on that ordinance that is providing, you know, will actually provide one-on-one -on -one, um, technical assistance to businesses to try to figure out like, you know, what products they need to switch to and where they can get them and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, for the Green Business Program as well, if you want to look a little more and and uh, you can always reach out to me, but see if it's a good fit for you or register your business online to get the, the process started. You can go to www.greenbusinessca.org. Um, yeah, that's about all I got. Thanks, Mark. That was great. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Danielle, I think you're here, right? I am. Hi, Danielle. Hello. Uh, you, you can uh, take it away. Everyone, I, I mean, I gave the intro in the beginning, but just a reminder, this is Danielle Stally from the city of Mill Valley, who is uh, a jack of all trades, a Jill of all trades. I don't know. Um, she will help us walk through some questions and concerns around foodware um, as we get closer to D-Day. I, I do want to just um, also mention that we, the City of Mill Valley has recently hired a sustainability coordinator. I'm very happy about that. Um, I will be giving her a lot of this work. Uh, she is part-time. She's full-time in terms of working on sustainability, but we share her 
with Tiburon um, jointly. So today actually she's in Tiburon. So I'll be giving the presentation, but Grace is available by email, you know, any day of the week, um, but is in our offices on um, Wednesdays and Thursdays. So we're very happy to have her. Um, and I don't know if we need to go into all this detail. I think Mark probably covered some in information, but um, the foodware ordinance was started a long time ago in conversation um, with the county and trying to make sure that we work collaboratively together to make sure um, the community, whether it be the business community or residents in Marin County, have similar regulations throughout different jurisdictions to make things easier for everyone involved. Um, COVID then hit um, and there's a delay in the adoption process. Um, the County Marin has adopted their ordinance in most um, other organizations and jurisdictions have also followed suit and adopted the model ordinance. The model ordinance will be um, affected, well, we're working on the ordinance right now. Um, it becomes enforced November 10th of this year, and that's through the Weights and Measures Department in um, the county. So I'm sure all of you are aware we've worked on this and it helps reduce litter, debris, provides this consistent regulation process, um, and also works towards all of the state legislation. It's also a great education tool. Um, we've been working towards composting for a long time. We've been talking about composting. So really having the businesses at the forefront to help educate and um, provide and facilitate the opportunity to do the right thing. We do that out in the public, in the restaurants, but as well as you can take those measures, understand things more and do it at home as well. Um, so basically, um, we've talked about this several times, but there's a lot of messaging involved and there's a lot of messaging that you can download if you are a restaurant um, on the call from the, the website, which is great. The city is more than well, um, willing to help as well as um, Mark mentioned the, the access to some um, staff members at the county. We're here to help you. So if there's any questions, in being able to help facilitate to make sure that you have these regulations and you understand, feel free to contact us. The most important thing is to remember spudware. That's basically the plant-based options aren't available and can't be processed locally in Mill Valley and Mill Valley, Valley Refuse. Um, that's different in San Francisco. It's different for other haulers. So it's important just to understand the local regulations so in Mill Valley and across, I believe, um, Marin County spudware is not allowed. So you really want to look at the fiber uh, wood type materials. And there are exemptions for some things that you just can't find. I believe right now, plastic, there's some tops that there's an exemption for in the in the ordinance and that change it's not in the ordinance it's based on a list as things change and that you can find on a regular basis on that um, county website as well um, some important things to think about there is a 25 cent um, fee associated with cups we have tried to introduce if there's anyone online that's interested in um, taking some stainless steel cups and trying to introduce them and have them as part of your restaurant or businesses program. Um, we do have cups that you could utilize to help with providing reusable cups as opposed to, um, you know, really incentivizing this 25 cent fee. What we're trying to do is change behavior in, in the long run. That's what we're trying to do. I see Molly on the phone call providing a thumbs up um and then this uh, it's also important if you're a restaurant that you have this takeout station or providing 
the the silverware at, upon request versus just providing the the silverware um, in every um, situation. And then another important thing is this front and back house, the three streamed con collection centers. So you have your recycling, composting, and things that go ultimately um, through the trash system. Um, so I know in Mill Valley, especially the biggest challenge is space, especially back of house. So it's important one to educate your your, your um, customers as well as back of house, your employees. And the second thing is space, finding that space to make things happen. There's best practices, there's different containers that can be used. We're here to help you. We can also help purchase some of those containers if you're having an issue with um, really making things work or switching out to the reusables. We're happy to help with um, some of that potentially. We're here again to help the businesses succeed. And then we just have an example of the bowls, straws, and utensils. Again, this is on the county website. It's really helpful to have those visuals and you can use those. Um, and we do have also, uh, Mill Valley has a laminator. If any of the, the signage that you see that you'd like to have downloaded or printed, we're happy to laminate any flyers for you as part of the program. And Grace will be walking around the community and the storefronts, introducing herself and also providing assistance as needed. I'm not gonna go into these details, but there's some exemplars. So again, it's important to touch base on that list of items that do provide exemptions for what's allowed and not allowed. Enforcement is November 10th. And again, it will happen through the county as part of the weights and measures. But hopefully we don't have to talk about enforcement because I know many of the businesses in Marin as well as Mill Valley are just looking to do the right thing and um, are advocates of sustainability. So I think that's about it. That's the website. And that's my information and Grace's information. Hey, Danielle, I have a question. Um, I think Grace and I talked about this a little bit, but I'm just for the benefit of the group. Um, Mill Valley is quite funky when it comes to are you in county, are you in city of, um, you know, Mil Miller Avenue at Evergreen uh, mm -hmm. or Montford can be, you can step in one direction or another and be in a different place altogether. So I'm just curious if you could maybe tell the group um, how they can make sure that they are within jurisdiction A or jurisdiction B and know how to engage with the county versus how to engage with the city. I know that you guys obviously are city of only, but um, I do know that there's probably a good bit of confusion around uh, where 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 a business is and how that impacts their ability to to make progress and make change and that sort of thing. Yeah, well, so the beauty is, and one of the reasons um, we, we work together is at least the regulations are the same. So, uh, really, you can look at the, the county website, you can download the any of the flyers, and they apply. The, the regulations are the same. Um, quickly, Strawberry and Shoreline Highway, if you're in those areas, those are unincorporated, unincorporated areas. And then anything basically from the high school, East Blythdale, down through the downtown is City of Mill Valley. Um, we're we're a small community where we get phone calls all the time not knowing which jurisdiction and we just forward information to the correct um, agencies and it, it works fine um, we're a small community in Marin County so we can make that work and we will just provide the accurate contact information for that person but we'll facilitate whatever we can based on a phone call and how would you, this is my last question, how would you characterize sort of where we are as city of Mill Valley 
right now within the ordinance and uh and and just yeah progress is, do you have a sense at this point of um how many folks are far down the road versus how many are not yeah you know grace has been introducing herself and um so they're just in a back and forth with her there are a few that in the city of Mill Valley that thought that this was only a countywide effort, or I'm sorry, not a countywide, uh, county jurisdiction only effort. So there is definitely more education needed. That's the best part of having someone that can just walk around town and introduce themselves. So um, in that initial review, it's clear that the city of Mill Valley needs to do more outreach. And so I think you'll see in the next Mill Valley Connect that there's information on, on the foodware ordinance. And then also we're, and Jim, you'll, you'll see it soon and you'll be able to link to it. We're having an ongoing sustainability newsletter thanks to Grace being part of the, the city. So there'll be ongoing news items on a more regular basis to get the outreach out. So we'll be making a push in the net, you know, for the next six weeks about the program and switching out to reusables before enforcement starts in November. Great, thank you. Anybody else with questions they wanna chime in on? Molly, I just wanted to say thank you, Danielle, and everyone else here. Danielle, when you said the spuds situation, you were only talking about utensils, but I also saw it, and I know it, of course, we all do, but all the bioplastics are not allowed. Correct? Correct. Now, because cups are very difficult, you can't get a cup unless you get this little solo cup that doesn't have any lining. Until there is a cup, a disposable cup that's available, people will still be using their cups. Is that correct? I think the easiest thing to do is put the cups at this point in as part of just trash. There's there's not right. a hot cup. Yeah. But, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all. But yeah, that's or landfill. Uh, Sorry, landfill. That landfill. Right. Yeah. But yeah, you're right, Molly, that, that, you know, hot, hot and cold, hot, hot, cold cups are on the exempted products list for this for now. Um, and, and everyone should keep in mind that, you know, as compliant alternative, as new compliant alternatives become available on the market, and, and we're seeing a lot, I mean, I have a, I have a big bag of um, you know, little ramekins with lids that are completely fiber-based and completely yeah. compliant with the ordinance. Mm -hmm. But until, um, so I'm seeing a lot of new uh, fiber-based compostable um, foodware products, but until, you know, until some, a good, a good uh, alternative becomes available, yes, of course, people are going to be able to continue to use their, um, their current okay. products. Okay. And the only thing about that is, of course, the messaging on those cups is Certified compostable, and I think that's just the contaminant that is the most difficult with this process. But that's awesome. totally, it's it's a huge it's a huge challenge, and and you know we wish that we could ban the manufacturers from putting that kind of labeling on their product because it's not true in our area. But they're definitely not manufactured here. Got you. Yep. And that's where the education is so helpful is so you know educating our our businesses and having grace go out there but then if we're educating and have those conversations as part of these experiences then hopefully the take home is doing the same thing and using that cup you take home from Pete's and then making sure it's placed in the correct bin at home just as much as it is out in the restaurant I have one more question. I'm going to be doing the waste management for the Fall Arts Festival and for the downtown um, community block party and hopefully the Winterfest and more. And this, and I, I just realized that there's food, there's vendors in there that are doing the food. So of course they're gonna get on, on the train 
once that happens, right? They're going to have the right, but it's the organizers that don't necessarily know about this um, ordinance. Is that, do they have to be compl compliant with the foodware ordinance in terms of events? Do you know if that's a thing or is it just restaurants? You know, I mean, it sounds like it, it's a it's complicated, right? Because there are jurisdictional issues here. Like the food vendors might not necessarily be marine based businesses, right? And and in which case they're not going to probably be aware of our local um, regulations here. Right. You know, when I um, when I work with uh, doing green business certification, right, for like event venues, for example, um, you know, I really encourage them and support them in um, creating, uh, you know, creating guidelines for vendors. And, you know, the Marin County Fair is really, really, really strict um, about this. And and some of some of the vendors uh, grumble about it, for sure. Um, but there are lots of, you know, lots of different kinds of very commonly used um, foodware materials that are not permitted by vendors at the county fair. You see a lot of people walking around with no drinks on their cups. I mean, no, no lids on their drinks. Um, so if I was, you know, I, I mean, my, my view is that the event organizer should make uh, participating food vendors aware of the local requirements. That's what we did. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I, I think you should definitely look at the ordinance because I'm not sure, I don't know, Mark, if you know, but um not sure special events. I know the county fair, I, I want to say there's even a, Molly, I mean, we should circle up differently. I think there is a line item about special events. Okay. If yeah. I am not, if I if I'm not mistaken. And that's same with SB 1383. There's also line mm -hmm. items for special events there. So um, no, I called Cal Cycle and they said that they, they, they're they required to do it or at least Mill Valley Refuse and they know that they have to require the composting. Um, I know, but there's special event things that are associated with that. And it's based on, I think, size. So. Okay, we'll talk about that. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Um, one more ad, Danielle. I mentioned this to Grace, but um, to the extent there are any outlying businesses that you know are, aren't engaging or have not yet responded to outreach from the city, um, the chamber has relationships with just about every food serving business in town in some capacity or another, and. Obviously, we want to continue moving the needle on this thing, and um, we want to help in any way. So if there are folks that are not returning calls or emails or whatever, um, we are always happy to help. Okay, I appreciate that. Anyone else with questions? I will um, reply to all with uh, the recording if necess if anyone wants it. Obviously, um, contact information, and um, you all know where to find me, and I would be happy to help anybody uh, keep moving through this. And if there are no more questions, we will call it a morning and uh, call it an afternoon. And um, yeah, thank you, everybody. We appreciate Mark and Danielle and, and Molly and everybody um, who brought some insight here. And um, Jim at millvalley.org, if you hang up and have questions and I will get them answered by someone who knows more than I do. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much for coming, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good one.